I'll start by saying social media is one of the hardest avenues of marketing to quantify an ROI. Mm -hmm. So whenever you can attribute a lead to one of your social media campaigns, that is going to help you really understand. Let's just say you run organic content for a year. You obviously want to do an end of year review to figure out, all right, where were my, my best sources of leads coming from? And a lot of the time agents focus on social media and they don't know if that person came from social media, if they close the deal. So one of the things that I would I would do and, and really focus on is attribute your social media leads to social media in any way that you possibly can. So every lead- Hi, I'm Natasha from Submagic, the ultimate AI short form editing tool. And today I'm joined with Ganon. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. Can you give the audience a little bit of an intro on you, what you do, where we can find you and things like that? Yeah. So I spent the last three years in digital marketing for real estate. My, my previous company, we managed quite a lot of money in advertising. So I have branched off and started doing it myself for social media content. And uh, I've had my own agency actually since 2020. And okay. it has taken me to now doing it full time, uh, which is exciting. So excited to jump into a lot of what I know, and what I've learned over the past four years for real estate. And uh, I I don't have a business card or anything. I actually went to a, a networking <laughs> event last night. Um, and I, I usually just tell people to go to my Instagram page, which right. is just Gannon marketing one word. And that's probably the best source of like what I do. So if you want to check it out, that's where I would go. Awesome. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about the best content tips for realtors in 2024. Let's go and get started. So what are the first steps a realtor should take when beginning to use social media for their business? And how can they set themselves apart in a crowded marketplace? Yeah, so the way that I think about this, it's kind of how I approach content. And I think how any service based business should approach content. So think about, you know, where your ideal client is right now, and then where they want to be. So if it's a seller, you know, they obviously own a house right now, but maybe they want to upgrade or they want to downgrade. Um, and then think about all of the individual steps that the person has to go through to eventually sell their house and get a new one. So that's one example. But my example that I use is, you know, real estate agents, they know the, the importance of social media, and they want to be able to post videos consistently. So right. in order to do that, you know, you have to research content, write content, record content, uh, edit the videos, and then post the videos on social media. Mm -hmm. So thinking about that in, in those five steps, you know, figure out what the exact steps are for your ideal client to go through and then address all of the questions that they'll have in each of those steps. So mm -hmm. for me, you know, let's just say they're in the recording step. All right, what's the best camera to use? What's the best microphone to use? What's the best lighting equipment? What's the best gimbal to use if I'm doing like property walkthroughs? right? Yeah. But if it's one of your leads, let's just say it's a seller. One of those questions could be like, all right, how do you find the, the value of my home? So when you take all of the questions in each of those steps, you basically just make videos about each of those questions. That's all you have to mm -hmm. do. So yeah. and the philosophy behind that is, you know, when people have questions, the first place they're going to is like Google, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram to find answers to these questions. And even if they don't look specifically, the algorithms are good enough to show people the answers to questions that they are afraid to ask. I think we've got to that point. So yeah. I, I would say if you're just, you know, starting out with content, list out all the steps that you want your ideal client to go through, figure out what the problems or the questions in each of those steps are, and then write short form videos that address those questions, literally 30 seconds. When you do that, you're never going to run out of content ideas. I mean, I, I probably have thousands of videos that I can record if I just go through that process. Yeah, I think um, we'll cover this later on. But in those questions themselves, you'll find amazingly strong hook titles and places to start with engaging your audience straight away off the bat just from answering those specific yeah. questions so I definitely try that out if you are getting started but um talking a little bit more about platforms specifically for people that are getting started in promoting their personal brand as a realtor what platforms would you recommend so I, I think about this in two ways right what is the easiest type of content for me to make and what type of lead do i want to attract now what i mean by that is for let's just say it's youtube specifically youtube tends to be like relocation buyers so mm -hmm. people moving from different states States, into your state, into your market, and right. they just want to know what it's like living there, right? So if you're focusing on buyers specifically, YouTube is a great source, but just know that it's going to take at least a year to start getting an ROI from that source. That's normal. Like I, I've been making YouTube videos for uh, probably two years now, and I'm still at like 1800 subscribers, but right. I mean, it's one of the best sources of leads for me. I don't, I don't care about going viral. I don't want to be like Mr. Beast, but you know, <laughs> the, the product that we have, like if I convert one lead off of one video, 
the ROI is like 10x. You can post those short videos to YouTube too. Like YouTube obviously does both long form and short form and they're both ranking in, in Google, which is interesting. The second part of that is like, all right, now that I know which which type of content I want to do that I can start with. And for that question, the answer is mostly going to be short videos for real estate agents because it's just less time intensive and you don't have to write the entire script for a YouTube video. You don't have to make a thumbnail. If you're going to do seller leads, uh, honestly, any platform for that's great. The hard part is just targeting geographically. You want to be able to target geographically if you're going for seller leads and yeah. Facebook and Instagram is going to be the best source for that. You just mentioned how you can kind of use short form to build your brand, but you actually see the best return kind of in your long form content over on YouTube. Do you tend to create long form and then remix it into shorter snippets? Do you use that kind of approach? I think what most people get wrong about it is just the format of the long video. What I mean by that is if you're good at writing short form videos, you're probably going to be good at writing long form videos because your long form videos are just multiple short videos within the same thing. I think people treat them totally separate. So they treat the long video as just basically like, look, all the content and then call to action. But uh -huh. it should be multiple sequences of that. And when you treat it as multiple sequences, it becomes easier to turn your long form content into short form content. Otherwise, your your short form from the long form is going to be totally out of context. Yeah. Like it's, it's not going to make any sense. There's going to be no hook. There's going to be no call to action. Yeah, awesome. And you're ultimately covering three platforms when you focus on short form. So it's better to kind of narrow your strategy down and excel in that first of all than to try and juggle all the content platforms at once I guess I do it full time and I still can't manage to do like long form yeah, all the it's time a lot. And short it's, form. A lot. it's a lot yeah okay so can you jump into the nitty gritty I want to learn about a few strategies that realtors can use to kind of create engaging posts that would attract potential buyers or sellers I think what's working really well right now is just voiceovers you want to figure out the, the best way to make your property tour videos engaging. And if it's just music and a house, you know, somebody can throw on Spotify in the background and go right to the MLS or Zillow and just look at properties. Like it's totally fine. Yeah. But you know, I think a lot of the top creators that are getting their leads through like Instagram in particular, they just do voiceovers and they just show you what you're looking at in the video, but also give you like an understanding of what that property could be turned into or different amenities because like yeah a lot of people don't know what they're looking at which sounds crazy but it's true <laughs> yeah so you want to get into hooks too but one of the ways that you can kind of like structure that video you can do two things so start your video by saying this is what 1.2 million dollars gets you in new york city obviously change the price point change the city for your location yeah but that's a really good way to start right like oh let's see this might be in my price range let's see what i can get right just people want to watch till the end second thing you can do is break down the mortgage breakdown at the end of the video Video. So you could say, hey, check out this property in Long Beach, California. By the way, if you want to see how much it's going to cost you, stick around to the end. I'll break down the price. That's yeah. it. And just go through the property. And then at the end of the video, just have like a little breakdown of the price at the end. It's it's very simple. Amazing. I think something to note there that you touched on is kind of just getting creative in the ways that you can demonstrate your listings. And one of those ways, like you say, is with a voiceover or perhaps you add the property amenities and features in text over the top of the reel. And it's a second kind of visual element that keeps people engaged and it's just moving away from the very traditional like very high polished seamless yeah. beautiful tours to something a little bit more creative and native to these trending platforms i'm sure you have seen noticed and jumped on at some point the kind of trending shorter snippet clips like seven seconds yeah. with some text on top or directing viewers to the caption specifically how can a real estate agent apply that strategy so essentially for anyone that doesn't know shorter clips that will ultimately loot while someone's watching or reading the text on the video will boost your view time your engagement and things like that and then you can kind of double down on that by adding a long form caption to the caption area what are your thoughts how can realtors apply that strategy if they want to if you're not comfortable with like speaking to a camera directly yet right you should get to that point because it's very <laughs> yeah. important you can basically just record yourself sitting at a desk and then you can put white text over the video itself so instead Instead of saying your hook out loud and speaking to a camera, just make the hook the first text somebody sees when they see the video. And then underneath yeah. that, it'll say like read caption, right? So that's it. That's all you do. It's much easier to get somebody to watch 100% of a six second video than it is yeah. to get them to watch 10% of a 60 second video. Yeah, amazing. And I think as well, it's a really nice entry point for anyone that is getting started to try that out and see how quickly they can 
garner some engagement and growth in with that specific strategy. It's a really easy way. If you're not confident with short form or editing or being on camera yet, you can employ that kind of approach of using a B-roll that you found online. You don't have to be in the video and then touching on a super trending topic or answering a really high value question that is relevant to your audience and things like that. That leads me into my next question, which is about an audience. Both social media and real estate is really about building relationships. So can you discuss the importance of boosting your engagement as a realtor on social media and how people can effectively do this to interact with their audience and build trust and credibility? Stories. I mean, stories is literally the only answer. <laughs> there is a story algorithm, but it's not as important as like reaching a new audience. So like I can literally just record on my phone like, hey, this is what I'm working on today. This client that we helped, you know, last week has a video that's blowing up, right? If you want to check out what we do, you know, DM me the word value or something, right? Yeah. All you have to do is just like stay active. Like I post like one to two stories a day. Stories are a big one. You can have a broadcast channel on Instagram that does help too. You can promote you know, some listings that you found in there. My target audience is real estate agent. I can tell by somebody's Instagram handle and their profile picture if they're a real estate agent. It's very easy for me to like post a, a story that is kind of designed for sales. And then anybody who interacts with it or views it that's in my target audience, I can just reach out to them, send them a voice message or a video saying, hey, I saw that you saw this. I know that sounds creepy, but like, you know, it's Instagram. Like I can check what you're doing. If you're interested in this, you know, let me know how I can help you. They follow me for a reason. They know what I do. They, they're interested in what I do. So it's not like, you know, I'm emailing some random person on the internet. It's, yeah. it's targeted to a sense, you know, monitor the people that are looking at the post and then interact with them in DMs. Yeah. And the key is in the follow up, right? So you can do spend tons of time in creating the best content and being super engaging and things like that. But unless you really nurture your audience, they're just there type thing. So I think showing that you care, interacting, replying to comments, creating stories, getting people conversating in DMs or replying to polls or asking you questions and things like that is a really great way to kind of nurture your audience. And also the algorithms are going to know that you're using the features that they put there to yes. grow your yes. audience, which is another great strategy, I suppose. Can you tell me a little bit about the key metrics that you recommend realtors to look at to see how their content is performing and what they can do to improve? Yeah, this is one of my favorite questions to answer because I have a background in finance and now marketing like I love numbers. I'll start by saying social media is one of the hardest avenues of marketing to quantify an ROI. Mm -hmm. So whenever you can attribute a lead to one of your social media campaigns, that is going to help you really understand. Let's just say you run organic content for a year. You obviously want to do an end of year review to figure out, all right, where were my, my best sources of leads coming from? And a lot of the time agents focus on social media and they don't know if that person came from social media if they close the deal. So one of the things that I would I would do and, and really focus on is attribute your social media leads to social media in any way that you possibly can. So every lead that a, a client generates comes through an automation through many chat. This is particularly on, on Instagram, right? If you can't, you can't do that on YouTube or TikTok yet. But whenever somebody registers as a lead through Instagram, they go right into the CRM and then they're tagged as, you you know, it would be run with it automation. Let's just say today's March 14th client generates theoretically, like just make it easy, a hundred leads. And by December 14th, so nine months from now, they have a closing and the, the automation was a result of that closing. So the person saw a nice property, they came through the lead form, they hit the database, and now we know at a 1% conversion rate that they have a closing attributed to Instagram. You wanna be able to attribute that, that content that you're putting so much work into, into you know dollars and figure out what's my ROI here. The number one is, is figuring out your source of leads and being able to track that. Don't get too caught up in views and followers. There are a lot of people out there who pretend they're famous and they buy followers. Don't get caught up in like the follower count, the like count. I had a video on on YouTube get like 70 views. And I was like, all right, this video sucks. And uh, I get a comment from somebody who was like, hey, can you help me set up these automations? And I'm like, really? It was like a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars for the deal. And the video yeah. got 70 views. Yeah. Right. And you never know who's watching, right? You only need one person to That's buy networking. or to convert or yep. whatever. So yeah, it's, it's really powerful. Well, thank you so much. All of Gannon's links will be in the description. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you, Gannon, for joining. And we will be back with another video very soon.